is this effect here. And what it does is it enhances the suspension stroke and, and thus the articulation of the vehicle suspension. Now I've got here a little film clip that you can watch. This has some animation and actual footage in it showing both the on-road and off-road capability. You start out here looking at the location of the components on the truck. This is accurate to the vehicle. You notice that hydraulic piping is up along the frame rail or it's out of harm's way. The system is very similar to what we use on the Lexus GX470 vehicle. The Lexus system is computer controlled. The Land Cruiser system is a little bit bigger and heavier duty and is all mechanically controlled. So out there when you're driving your Land Cruisers today, you do nothing to activate this system. It automatically works for you. All you do is drive the truck. One of the things that's a very challenging mission from a chassis engineer perspective on, on SUVs is how to design a truck that is manageable and, and predictable on-road, yet also have good off-road suspension performance. Stabilizer bars are great for on-road driving. Okay? They help keep the vehicle flat in the turns, as you're going to see here in the animation, and help the vehicle handle more predictably on-road. But those of you that have been off-road much know that a stabilizer bar also tends to limit wheel travel, which thus can limit your ability to keep the tires on the ground when you're out off-roading. In fact, over the years, I've bumped into many people out there on the trail who have simply, before going onto the trail, unbolted their stabilizer bars and left them at home in the garage. Then, of course, they wobble their way out to the, to the trailhead on the highway with a very unsteady vehicle. So uh, the engineers have to compromise on that. If you look at other Toyota SUVs, our engineering staff has got stabilizer bars on there, but also then they have to compromise a bit to allow that suspension to flex a bit, too. So there's kind of a, a yin and yang to that. There's a little bit of a dichotomy of, of, of interest there from an engineering point. Now you can see here on road your hydraulic pressure is equal, thus your stabilizer bars are active and working. This also allows us to use a bigger stabilizer bar on this truck than we would normally be able to use. With this system we do not have to compromise. We can put a nice big stabilizer bar in there, keep that Land Cruiser very flat in the turns on on-road driving, and then when we go off-roading it's able to disengage from the vehicle and allow you to have that great suspension travel you would have. It's almost as if you had no stabilizer bar at all. Here you can see the off-road condition. Note the wheel travel there. Those front tires are starting to drop away from the vehicle. That will automatically trigger the system to, to work and let that suspension flex more. We have about four inches of additional total articulation on the suspension over the previous model. One of the ways that I rate a vehicle's off-road capability is its ability to keep its four tires planted on the ground. The better we can do that, the less traction aids and, and you know, traction control or locking differentials you would need. The vehicle is much more better uh, suited to the trail if it can keep its feet planted, so to speak. And you will have a, a definite good chance to use this crawl control mode on several spots on your off-road course today. We're actually going to instruct you to do so at the checkpoints out there. You'll have a chance to uh, experience that along with the KDSS. But this, this out here you'll see on these, these bumps today on the, on the off-road section, this truck remains very unflappable when you drive over these things. You look at these bumps and you'll think, geez, okay, I'm going to get all sideways and weird. And the Land Cruiser has an ability to really stay flat out there off-road also due to that suspension stretch. There you can see the uh, imbalance in the hydraulic fluid in the cylinders there, which allows that system to disengage the stabilizer bars. So once again, a Land Cruiser a vehicle of no compromise. It really gives you the best of both worlds. A little animation there of how that all works. Kind of hard to see under the vehicle while you're driving. We also offer you a variable gear ratio power steering system on Land Cruiser. You'll have a chance to experience this both on and off road today, too. What we do here is we give you a nice ratio in the center of the steering racks. So when you're out on the highway and you're exhibiting minimal steering input on the vehicle, it gives you a very nice, stable, and, and gentle response to the wheels. But as you make more steering input, if you want to do maybe a U turn or you're going to do some maneuvering on the trail, as you steer the, the, the wheel over to one side or the other towards the end of its stroke, that, that gear ratio changes and gives you more wheel deflection there than it does in the center of the rack. So really, it enables you to maneuver a rather large vehicle in a much more nimble fashion, great for urban driving, and excellent for trail driving both. Our brakes are four-wheel ventilated disc brakes, sized for the, for the vehicle. We'll have a chance to test those today. Here's a big change, too, here. Towing capacity, the previous model would tow about 6,500 pounds maximum. The new model will now tow 8,500 pounds. So our utility factor on the new Land Cruiser has gone up by a large margin here making this a more versatile vehicle for the owners. One of the ways we do that is with our new 5.7-liter uh, V8, uh, which was introduced here earlier uh, on the new Tundra full-size pickup. This engine puts out a whopping 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque. You'll have a chance to try that out today, and it moves the vehicle around with authority. Here's another nice little benefit here, too. 
Take a look at this slide. The emissions here, tier two, bin five, ULF two. That's based on the vehicle size and class. A 2007 Land Cruiser, if we take the EPA numbers for fuel economy on that and convert them to the 08 standards for testing, that vehicle would achieve 12 and 15 on its rating, 12 city, 15 highway. New Land Cruiser now, under the 08 testing methods, will provide you 13 in the city, 18 on the highway. That is with an engine with almost 100.